There are several reasons to set up your My Social Security account, and in the context of this channel, you're going to want to have your My Social Security account all set up in order to sign up for Medicare. The problem is, is that the process for setting up this account is a bit tricky. So I'm gonna show you my screen, and then I'll go through exactly what you need to do and common mistakes that you can avoid. From here forward, I highly recommend that you have something to keep track of, usernames, emails, and passwords not just during this initial signup process, but you will need these login details for the rest of your life as you log into this account. You're going to be creating usernames, passwords, using emails, your phone, and verifying all of this information through your phone and your email address. So you're gonna to wanna to have your phone handy and access to your preferred email address. Now you set up a My Social Security account from the Social Security Administration's website, which is ssa.gov. They update the look of this site relatively often, but the general flow should be pretty similar regardless of when you are watching this. In the upper right hand corner, you're going to select sign in and from there you're going to click create an account with login.gov. Now click the tab that says create an account, enter an email address that you have easy access to and can view and receive messages. Here's our first stopping point to address a big mistake that we see happen all of the time, especially with spouses. Some spouses who use one email together for everything will run into problems at this point. If you and your spouse use the same email for each other, meaning there's two spouses, one email, that's not going to work out well here. You will each need separate emails. My wife should not sign up for this account using my email address. If she does use my email before I set up my account, then I will not be able to sign up for my own account using my email address. If I've already signed up for an account using my email address and she tries to use mine, she won't be able to continue down this process. You each need your own separate email addresses. Now put in your email address to the field here and click that little box that acknowledges that you have read and accept the login.gov terms of use and then click submit. Next, you're going to get a message to the email address that you put into that field. The message is going to have you confirm that you have access to that email address that you just gave. When you get that message, click the confirm your email address button in your email message. Your email will be used as your username to log in for the future, and now you're going to set up your password. Your password needs to be at least 12 characters long. It can't include common phrases or repeated characters like ABC or 111. And then there are colored bars along the bottom indicating the strength of your password as you type. Red means weak, yellow is getting better, and green is good. Make sure you save this password somewhere and then click continue. From here, you're going to be directed to a second authentication method setup. This is referred to as two-factor authentication. Social security fraud and identity theft is a huge issue in our country, and this two-factor authentication is a way to help prevent these things from happening to you. Some people get a little frustrated with this, but know that you will need to put in your username and password that you just set up, as well as this second method of verification every time you sign into your My Social Security account. I'm going to pick text or voice message. You can choose what you want and then click continue. I'll put in the phone number that I can access right now to get a text notification and then click send code. A text message will be sent to your phone with a six digit code. Put that code in this next screen and click submit. If you'd like to add another method of verification for added security, you can, but I'm going to skip this step for now. On the next screen, I'm going to click agree and continue. Next is a long disclosure about the terms of service for using the ssa.gov website. Now there will be people who don't like their data out there. I don't really know what to tell you here. Any data that you'll put in here is already known by the government. In fact, that's exactly what it is for. They're verifying that you are who you claim to be when signing up for this account. If you want to continue signing up online, click I agree to the terms of service and next. Now you'll enter basic information about yourself so that the Social Security Administration can match you up with the records that they have for you. This is your basic information like your name, social security number, date of birth, home address, and phone number. Here's another big mistake that we see happen often. Make sure that you enter your name as you have it on your official government documents like your social security card. If you go by Don in regular life, but your full name on your social security card is Donald, 
you need to put Donald here in this step. Women who have changed their last name, maybe you got married and you no longer go by your maiden name, or you're divorced, or you changed your first name, and you've updated all of this with the Social Security Administration and you have a different Social Security card, make sure you put what the government has for you in these fields. We had a person named Mary Kay. For part of her life and on her birth certificate, she spelled K-K-A-Y-E. Well, after high school, she officially changed it to K-A-Y. And then if her middle initial was used with just the letter K, that was also used on official documents. By not using what was on her social security card and what the government had for her, it caused problems later as she was signing up not only for this account, but signing up for Medicare and delaying that process. So use the official name as the government has it for you. Next is your address, and you'll notice that they will not accept a business address unless it is also the place where you live. Make sure you use the phone number that you have access to right in this moment because you are going to get another activation code sent to you so they can verify you. I'm going to pick text message and click next. You will now receive an activation code. It is a little bit longer than the last one. Mine starts with an A and a dash. Put in the letter and the dash along with the other eight numbers and then click submit authentication code. Now you have yet another verification step, which will include uploading some documentation or answering some specific questions that prove that you are who you say you are. I'm going to choose to upload my driver's license. There are other options for you to choose from. I've done this alongside others and it seems like we always have something go a little bit sideways trying the other options. The driver's license upload has always been the easiest for me, but you can go through these other steps if you'd like. Pick the method that you would like to use and click next. Now in uploading your driver's license, they are going to send yet another link to your phone after you put in the same phone number that I think we've put in three or four times already up to this point. Click request text message. Do not close your computer window. You will be coming back to this exact same spot. So go over to your phone and click the link in the text message that you just received from the Social Security Administration. You'll tap the Let's Get Started button on your phone. Select the document you would like to upload. Mine is going to be my state-issued driver's license. There are instructions on the best way to take that picture. When you are ready, click Capture ID Photo. You'll get a pop-up asking for permission to access your camera. For this, tap Allow. Next, you'll capture the front and back of your ID. It is a bit picky in the image quality that it is going to accept, so make sure that you have enough light and then hold your camera still. You may have to try a few times. I needed to try three times on the front of my license and twice on the back of my license for it to accept my photo taking skills. Once you have both the front and the back pictures uploaded, tap the looks good button on your phone. At this point, we are going to go back to our computer and to the ssa.gov website page that we left a couple of minutes ago. From there, we are clicking that yes, we have finished taking the photos and click continue. You will get confirmation that you have successfully set up your login.gov account. Click next. Okay, we are almost done here. Your next step is to click I agree to the terms of service box and click next. Now you are met with your welcome to your very own My Social Security account. Click Set Preferences. It'll ask how you want to receive notices, whether through online methods like email only or paper notices and online notices. Make your selection. If you choose the top one where you do not get paper copies, click the box that says that you have read and agree with the authorization agreement. It's going to make you open the authorization agreement to proceed, so make sure that you do so, read it, and then click Close. Next, you'll choose your preference on how you want to be notified. I'm choosing email. You can choose email or text or both email and text. Click Save and Continue. Everything should now be saved and updated, so click Continue to Homepage. I'll show a few things that you can do once you're in your account, but I want to address some troubleshooting first. Your process should look similar, but may look different. My wife did not have the exact same steps as I did in setting up her account. If you already set up a My Social Security account prior to September of 2021, then you are linking your login.gov account with your My Social Security account. If you run into issues along the way where you are unable to verify information, your next steps would be to contact the Social Security Administration. You can call, be prepared for long wait times, or you can schedule an appointment to go into your local office. Again, expect wait times of a few days to a few months out into the future. 
But remember, you are attempting to access the Social Security Administration's website, so their support team is going to be who you reach out to with any issues. Okay, let's look at what you can do once you are in here. You can see your Social Security statements. You can replace your Social Security card. You can view your benefit verification letter. Your benefit verification letter is the letter that you would receive if you had applied for Social Security benefits and or Medicare and were approved. If you are bumping up against a deadline with your Medicare signups for supplement plans, drug plans, or Advantage plans, and you need to get your Medicare number as soon as possible, but you haven't received your Medicare card yet, you can look here in your My Social Security account, and you can see your Medicare number here a few days before you actually receive your Medicare card. From your My Social Security account homepage, you can also see your Social Security eligibility and earnings, review your full earnings record, Look at your retirement calculator to see how much Social Security benefits you receive by taking it early or at your full retirement age or delaying it to 70. So there are a lot of fun things to kind of play around with here in your account. Now I'm working on a full step-by-step -step tutorial on how to apply for Medicare now that you have your My Social Security account all set up. It will either pop up right here or I am still working on it depending on when you have watched this video. I will see you over there.